Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme, Crossing New Frontiers to Conquer Today's Challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Philip M. Aguale. Parallel supercomputing is an entirely new approach to modern computer science. Yet, there is a limit to the theoretically unlimited speed of the parallel supercomputer. Looking back, in 1946, the fastest computer in the world used only one scalar processing unit. In 1988, the fastest computer in the world still computed with only one vector processing unit. Shortly after the U.S. Independence Day of 1989, the media reported that an African supercomputer wizard in the United States of America had discovered how the most massively parallel supercomputer ever built can massively compute with 65,536 commodity processors and solve 65,536 computational physics problems and solve them simultaneously. 9 in 10 supercomputer circles are executed while solving extreme scale systems of equations of algebra and physics. I had figured out how to finesse my 64 binary thousand processors enabling them to communicate and to communicate and collaborate to reduce the time to solution of extreme scale systems of equations of algebra and to reduce that time to solution from 65536 days or 108 years on one isolated processor to just one day across an ensemble of 65,536 processors. That new knowledge enabled those processors to compute quickly and accurately and to make the impossible to solve systems of equations of extreme scale algebra possible to solve. I introduced how to use that new knowledge in algebra and thus build digital replicas of petroleum reservoirs and the Earth's climate. I want to be remembered as the first person to witness the transition from the computer that did one thing at a time to the supercomputer that did many things at once. I believe that our children's children will coin a new word for their supercomputers. They will invent supercomputers that are science fiction to us. I discovered a new way of thinking about the new fastest supercomputer and about the supercomputer of tomorrow, not as a computer per se, but as a global network of tightly coupled processors that is an internet. My discovery was processor agnostic and was a blueprint for a never before seen internet. The invention of a faster supercomputer is a milestone of human progress. That invention made some impossible to solve problems arising in physics, algebra, and calculus 
possible to solve. I'm Philip Emma Aguale. I remember the day I first programmed a supercomputer. It was June 20, 1974. I remember that date in part because I was on the cover of a local newspaper that was published three weeks later and because then U.S. President Richard Nixon was forced to resign 18 days later. Back in mid-July 1974, the half-dozen Nigerians in Polk County of Oregon were proud to see my photo on the cover of their local newspaper. That newspaper was on the newsstands of the Oregonian cities of Monmouth and Independence. The Nigerians that read that article came to congratulate me. Nigerians crowded into my tiny one-room studio apartment that was at 195A South North Street, Monmouth, Oregon. That evening, we talked about the recent resignation of then U.S. President Richard Nixon. That evening, we went to see a performance in Monmouth, Oregon, that was delivered by the mentalist called the Amazing Kresge. I remember the day my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing was highlighted by the Wall Street Journal. I remember it as June 20, 1990. Not because I was in the Wall Street Journal per se, but because I started programming conventional supercomputers exactly 16 years e earlier on June 20, 1974 and at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Corvallis, Oregon, United States. I remember by association, not memorization, and for that reason, friends say that I have a photographic memory an elephant memory, called an eidetic memory. I was asked, how did Philip Emma Aguale become a father of the internet? When I began supercomputing back on June 20, 1974, in Corvallis, Oregon, United States, I did not embark on a quest to become a father of the internet. But if the father of the airplane is the pe person that invented the first airplane, then the father of the internet should be the person that invented the first internet. I am the only father of the internet that invented a new internet. And I am known as the first person to program a new internet that I visualized as a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors that I also visualized as being equal distances apart from each other. Those 65,536 processors had separate memories from each other with each processor operating its own operating system. It made the news headlines in 1989 that I discovered that new internet to be a virtual supercomputer. My physical experiments across my ensemble of tightly coupled commodity of the shelf processors gave me the street cred that is akin to that of the prophet that became a political prisoner or that of the poet whose wife committed suicide. I'm Philip Emma Aguale. Students writing school reports on great inventors often ask, what is Philip Emma Aguale known for? In abstract geometrical terms, I'm known for defining and delineating this technology called parallel processing and for precisely describing it as the vital technology that enables supercomputing across the surface of a globe. That globe is embedded within a 16-dimensional hyperspace 
and I'm known for discovering that supercomputer as a never before, before seen internet that is a new global network of two raised to power 16 or 65,536 tightly coupled processors that were identical to each other, that shared nothing between each other, with each processor operating its own operating system. Back in 1989, I was in the news for discovering practical parallel processing, the technology that enables the modern supercomputer to solve many real-world problems at once, instead of solving only one problem at a time. Massively parallel processing enabled me to solve one grand challenge problem of mathematical physics that is an ensemble of 65,000 536 challenging problems of computational physics and solve them synchronously. Loosely speaking and in theory, the computer that is powered by only one processor can solve a grand challenge problem that the parallel supercomputer that is powered by one billion processors can solve. However, the computer takes 1 billion days, or nearly 3 million years, to solve a grand, challenge, a grand challenge problem that the parallel supercomputer takes only one day to solve. However, it took me 16 years, onward of March 25, 1974, to understand the physics calculus and algebra and arithmetic, or to understand the human process of solving that grand challenge problem. I had to understand that process before I can instruct my ensemble of 64 binary thousand processors on how to massively parallel process the grand challenge problem that I divided in, into as, into as 65,000 536 smaller problems. I was in the news because I discovered practical parallel supercomputing or how to solve many problems at once or in parallel and how to simultaneously solve 65,536 problems across 65,536 tightly coupled processors and solve them at the same time. What is Philip? What is the Philip Emma Aguale internet? Even after I had won the top prize in supercomputing and won it after 16 years of supercomputing, it took another 16 years for many supercomputer scientists to understand that I had parallel processed across a new internet and that I invented a new internet that was a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors. That 60 year delay or adjustment period was due to the fact that parallel processing across a new internet was very difficult to understand. Parallel processing empowered me to invent a virtual supercomputer that is a new internet that retains the illusion of being a computer per se. On the blackboard, my new internet exists almost to the point of complete abstraction. My new internet is the invincible and the marginal technology that haunts the transit zones where the boundaries between mathematical physics and computational physics and between computing and supercomputing are blurred. My definition of an internet is a metaphor that destabilizes the textbook meaning of the word 
computer that in turn was first used in print 2,000 years ago and first used by the Roman author Pliny the Elder. I was asked, why is Philip Emma Aguale called a father of the internet? I am called a father of the internet because I am the only father of the internet that invented a new internet. Inventing a parallel supercomputer that costs more than the annual budget of each of the 40 poorest nations in the world is tougher than writing a book of poetry. And tougher in part because to invent is to make the impossible possible. That's why 50,000 fiction books are published each year in the United States alone. That's why 300,000 books are published each year in the United States alone, with the average book selling less than 250 copies. In contrast, it took half a century to invent a new supercomputer and to progress from the Turai supercomputer of 1939 that in theory could solve a system of 29 equations of algebra. It took 50 years to progress to the parallel supercomputer of 1989 that made the news headlines when I used it to solve 24 million equations of large-scale algebra that was then a world record. For this reason, inventing a new supercomputer is rarer than writing a best-selling book. The number of self-published books is over 1 million a year. You cannot read the same book 10 times. However, 10,000 programmers can program the same supercomputer and do so at once. If you are a writer, you can write 1,000 words every day. If you are a mountain climber, you cannot become the first person to climb Mount Everest, the highest mountain, and climb it every day. You cannot break that historical record every day. If you are an inventor, you cannot invent a new internet every day. The reason it is easier to write than to invent is that the writer creates her literature, hence the term creative writer. But it is impossible to have a quote-unquote creative discoverer. You can write one page a day and complete a novel in one year. But you cannot write one page a day and invent a new supercomputer or invent a new internet and do so every year. Writing is infinite, but inventing is finite. Great scientific discoverers are rare simply because groundbreaking discoveries that are prerequisites to becoming a great discoverer are also rare. Great scientific discoverers are rare because they can only discover a thing that pre-exists and the discoverer's genius has nothing to do with the pre-existence of her discovery. Great inventors are rare because the inventor can only invent what's possible to be invented. Great inventors are rare because they cannot invent a law of physics or invent a perpetual motion machine. Insightful and brilliant lecture.